Welcome to the Maureen Pound Show. Today I've got the amazing Jason Fisher joining me and he's going to share how to put the relationship back into customer relationships. Um, I've known Jason for about seven years. Uh, he's a, a straight talking guy, shoots straight from the hip, says it as it is and that's what I really like about him amongst many things. He, um, he really says it how it is and um, builds great relationships. So welcome, Jason. Thank you, Maureen. Great now, before be we uh, jump into the nitty-gritty of all those wise tales and insights you're going to share with us, can you share with our audience today something that we might be surprised to know about you, Jason? Well, probably because I'm sitting here with... Uh, it's a bit of a shaved head. I'm a, I'm a regular every three weeks on the day, get my hair cut at Uncle Rocco's, um, have done for probably 10 years, um, and I'm actually now cutting my own hair. So I've, uh, I've done, given myself a buzz cut. So fancy cutting your own hair after all this time. And, um, and how's it going? How was the experience? Uh, well, I actually put a little video up. I thought uh, when I'm shaving off the uh, shaving off the, the nice haircut, it was going to be interesting. But um, yeah, it's sort of. I still look at, at at the moment, looking at my face, thinking, "Is that me, or is that somebody else with a shaved head?" So <laughs> always <laughs> interesting. Yeah, I think the hairdressers and the barbers are going to do some business once uh, things open up here in Melbourne. Definitely. Now let's jump into it. Putting the relationship into customer relationships. So, can you just share with me? you know, why this is really important to you and your key reason for wanting to share some insights about this today? Uh, I, I actually tried to think about how to how to articulate this because probably the main thing I would say is um, I don't feel like this is a gimmick that you should use. I, I think this is something that you should use in your life. It helps you not only in business but, but in everything because I, I feel like relationships... Uh, whether they're suppliers, um, friends, family, everything is, is very important. And, um, yeah, I just sort of feel like this is probably all part of it. So, Excellent. So um, now let's start with your first point, which I love. And I love the way you always put things in a really interesting way. But you've said to me, you know, Maureen, uh, sales is like going to Hillsville. So tell me, tell us a little bit about that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so I, I grew up in Hillsville. Um, a lot of it was a, a bit of a different, uh, but um, I had a teacher in high school. His name was Mr. DeMonkey. Uh, actually, I'm still friends with him to this day. He's a, he's a ripper guy. But he used to talk to, me to Hillsville, and they'd come up because they wanted to see the, the bush. They wanted to see um, what what the bush was like. And and what he was explaining was people would walk in. In, well, you know, they'd, they'd go to the outback of Hillsville and say, wow, look at all this green, like it's all green. They would never see that there's a, a gum tree, that there's a tree fern, that there's bracken on the ground, that there's all different types of trees that are there. All they would see is a great big green blur. Uh, and to me, I think that if you look at customers or if you walk into a business and all you see is a big green blur, then you're not seeing um, each person for how important they are within that business. Probably, and probably the example I would give with that is the first person I'm always making sure that I say hello to and that I'm nice to is the person at the front desk. Like the person who is the first person as you walk in. If, you, if you're walking in looking over their shoulder or trying to see the person that you're supposed to catch up with, then, then that person doesn't feel that you value them. And I, and I think it is important that you do genuinely value everybody within a business. Yeah. So it's that um, uh, not seeing not seeing the detail around the fact that there's uh, there's a whole lot of uh, people there that you build, should be building relationships. And when rather you're just there going, okay, well, I really need to build relationship with one person when, in fact, sometimes you can't even get to that one person. Exactly. And, look, the example I, I would give back, and, and uh, you know, again, this, this is a genuine interest that I have, is, is I'll always make sure I speak to everybody that I can on the way through, not to say that you stop and waffle, but... But for exactly that reason that you said is the next time I call 
that business and need to speak to the to the boss, the first person I speak to is the is the person who who was the first person I saw when I walked in the door. So again, if I call and say, "Good day, it's Jason from CRMA," and and in my case, I'll try and um, learn something about them, like what they're doing on the weekend, then I'll say, "You know, how was the footy on the weekend? Did you you know did your team win?" That sort of thing. And if you have that when you have the phone conversation, then that person realizes that you're genuinely engaged and that you care about them. Yeah, yeah. And just on that, because I think you're really good at this, some people have their questions ready, right? So they'll go, oh, how are you? Did you have a good weekend? They'll go, yeah, oh, you know, oh, you know. And then you'll ask a secondary question. Oh, what did you do on the weekend? So that's what I've really noticed about you is people think, oh, yes, well, I can, I'll ask that superficial question of someone and build a relationship. But you always take it much deeper than that. So tell me about that. So probably for me um, is again um, it, like the past week. There's been the um, all the campaigns around mental health and asking people how they are. And it's always they say it's important about the second question. And to me, uh, and again, I'm not trying to find a gimmick. I'm trying to find something that that somebody is genuinely interested in. So it's a case of um, you know. It, it, the fallback is something like the weather, which you don't ever want to use. But, but how was your weekend? Is probably a good next question. Or um, how's your day been so far? Or that type of thing. So, so hi, how are you? I mean, you'll say how are you to somebody when you walk past them on the street. Well, when we were allowed to walk on the street, but but when you when you can when you're out walking, you'll say how are you without actually thinking how is that person. And so the secondary question to me is actually genuinely finding out. So how's your morning been, Maureen? Like it's it's that genuine question that you yeah that you that you want to find out from that person. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I've actually been doing it in the supermarket lately to get extra little books. So you know you get extra things when you put in the effort. So I'll ask the person behind the counter, you know, where they are in their shift, and then I'll ask them what um, are they studying as well because most of them are and it just opens up a whole broad conversation and then you're more likely to get something back from that person because you've given to them yeah and again it's not a sales gimmick like it's not a not a um, I'm doing this just because I want to get something out of you I mean you, you might not get something from that person again for the rest of your life but but um, it's like a wave in the traffic a wave in the traffic is free. If someone lets you in, it doesn't cost you $5 to do it. It doesn't mean it's going to take 25 minutes out of your day. It's a wave in the traffic. And to genuinely ask somebody a question and ask how they are or ask them something that, that is important to them. And in the reality, you're, the, the checkout example you just gave, you're stood at that checkout. You're not going anywhere else. You're not standing there thinking, well, I've got to get the, the groceries in the car or anything. You're standing there and you're using your time by actually developing a relationship with that person. Yeah, well, I could get on my phone, couldn't I? <laughs> and and just then again, this is my opinion. And back to the straight shooter. If, if there's anything more rude than that, I, I'm not too sure what it is. But and I mean, the amount of businesses you walk into now, where they actually say on the wall, when you finish talking on your phone, we'll serve you. Like it's yeah, yeah and each it's of their own. Enough, isn't it? Sorry, what was that? That's fair enough, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. And again, especially it. This is where it actually starts kicking in, is if you think that that person is trying to develop a relationship with you in the same way that you're trying to develop a relationship with them. And and it's a it's a human um, response that we want to interact with people. Like, we, we want to interact, which means as soon as you go, you've, you've lost interest. Like, you're basically saying whatever is happening on my phone is more important than you. Yeah. I've actually, it's a good, I've got to watch that with my children, actually, because I... I think that you know um, I'm not showing that they're important when I when they're chatting to me and I pick up my phone. Thanks for yeah, that. Jack. <laughs> that's not to say that you can't use your phone, and, and even to the point where I don't think it matters if if somebody walks in the room and you're replying to somebody's text message or or whatever it might be. I don't think it's it's rude to say I'm actually engaged with this person in in this medium, and so yeah, I, I actually think that's okay to still do that. Yeah, okay, great. So um, what we have um, covered and what the key thing there is that from what Jason's shared is that it's about building relationships with that person by taking the time in your day, even the smallest amount of time, to, um, to ask them a question or ask them a couple of questions, back it up with a secondary question to build that relationship. Because in business, it's not just about the relationship with one person 
um, you, you know, your one person who's your client, it's all those other people around as well. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And, and, it, oh, and again, no, again, it, it's, it's looking at those relationships as one being a tree fern and one being a, a ghost gum tree they're not the same person and they don't have the same interests and, and they're completely different, but they both offer something unique in themselves and what they can offer you and what they offer their business. Everybody's unique. So it's important to build those relationships. Yeah, great. Thanks for that one. Um, that's a really good point. Now, the second point we wanted to make today uh, is around, you know, being me being an ex-secondary teacher, I feel strongly about the school system and we're not going to get into a whole discussion about that. But you have said that you have some thoughts on what you think the top subject that should be taught in schools is. So tell me about that, Jason. Oh, I'm sure I'll get, my brother is actually an English teacher, so I'm sure I'll get in trouble saying that, it's, that it should be the top subject. But, but probably back to what I was just saying then about, about relationships is it also works, I mean, it works for kids, it works for grandparents, it works for, for everybody in between. And to me, uh, like maybe maybe when we used to all, I, I'm, I don't know about you, Maureen, but I used to have to do religious studies in primary school and I couldn't stand it. But but it actually taught you a little bit about um, do unto others, you have them do unto you and all that sort of stuff. And to me, if you taught people about sales, about the fact that if, if you want to engage somebody, that you need to take time to listen to them and then understand what it is that they want and then you can you can sell them something and by the same token if somebody is coming to try and sell you something you need to be able to articulate what it is that you want but, and, and explain it so that in, and in that case and probably the example you're giving with the the person at the checkout is that's somebody who you're building a relationship with and to me that's why if you were to learn sales it would benefit you in every aspect of your life it would benefit when you when you want to actually play football with with four kids that are replaying football, if you walk out there and say, can I join in your game? And they're halfway through it. If you take time to understand what's going on in their situation, it actually helps. So to me, that, that's why I think sales is an important thing to do because you'll sell better and buy better when you understand the person that you're dealing with, which would mean that if you're, if you want to swap your sandwich with somebody at primary school, the best way to do it is to say, I've got a really good sandwich here, but what have you got there? And what did your mum make you? And she must be really good at making sandwiches. And how does she always use that sort of bread? Yeah, no worries, we can swap. Yeah. So I love there, there's a duality there of the um, the building relationship and complimenting the person and, and finding the good stuff about them. And then also the other part there that you mentioned was um, then sharing what you have to offer as well. So it's like that lovely combination rather than just, oh, I've got a really big, you know, a great sandwich. It's got lettuce and it's got, uh, you know, cheese and tomato and it's, you know, all this beautiful, beautiful. Then it becomes a bit suspect to the other person, the other kid. He's going, why is that going on, you know, trying to, you know, push their sandwich at me? Whereas your your example there is you've given a nice combination of, saying nice things about them as well as then sharing what you've got to offer. Exactly, yeah. And, and, and that's it, is that once you build a relationship and once you break it down and you're actually communicating with that person directly, um, that, that's where the relationships start to, start to build. So, and, we, yeah. and, and to be honest with you, it, and not, again, not to say it's why you should do it, but it's also when you'll start to get what you want and, and someone else will get what they want is when you take time to understand each other and appreciate what each other wants, you build a relationship which makes any transaction, buying, selling, swapping, whatever it might be, it makes it easier. Yeah. But often um, sales, to still to this day, Jason, is seen as, you know, it's got a real negative connotation to it. Um, and so even, you know, it's a little bit confronting saying sales should be taught in schools. So, and I know it's more symbolic for you, you know, it's not, you know, straight sales, but what do you think about what, what needs to happen around this for it to be seen to be more of a, um, a useful life skill? Well, I, I suppose the example, like it, it's, it's, it's back to building, um, like it, it, this is where I was saying, I suppose it needs to be genuine. So if you, if you, 
sales sales has a bad reputation because if somebody comes in and goes hi how are you and then starts talking to the to the male in the relationship and this is the person who's going to make the decisions and i know what happens here and i'm going to dictate to this person what happens that's bad sales and probably what where i'm coming from is it's about the relationship in the sale like it's about knowing that 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 um maureen has two kids or it's about knowing that that Jason lives Bayside and likes riding bikes or something like that. It, it's building the relationship so that you can understand what the sale requirement is. And, and sorry, back to your question is because people do it badly and because when somebody is trying to sell something and, it, and they're only in it for themselves. So if, if someone's there saying, I've got this pile of rubbish and I want you to have it because you should buy it because that means I get paid more money, which means this is all about me. This transaction is about me. I want this to happen as quickly as possible. That's when you're not putting a relationship in it, which is where it also gets where you get a bad reputation for doing it. Yeah, exactly. So the other message there is, you know, taking it slower. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You don't want to rush these things. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> oh, dear. And, and tell us about the LinkedIn um, goodness you got. You weren't selling. You were actually giving to somebody else the other day by getting your VA to send messages. Tell us about that. Uh, yeah, look, it, it, it's it's again having genuine relationships with people, and um, how much somebody uh, appreciated the the message that that I'd sent. Um, so it's it, it, again, it's about um, I don't want to say validating somebody, but it's about giving somebody um, a good feeling about making them or helping them to feel better about themselves. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So often people want to send messages on LinkedIn. Someone said, a client said to me the other day, oh, shall we send our brochure? I'm like, no, because that would be, here's my pile of rubbish. Look at our rubbish. Here's a, here it is. But if you're sending a genuine message to, to someone going, you know, how are you going during COVID? You know, we're doing this. It's more of a two-way thing rather than a, you know, here's the pile. And then goodness comes just from having interaction. Yeah, and, and uh, I mean, I'm not trying to spruik back to, to something that I did, but I actually put a post on LinkedIn saying there's nothing more more annoying than it's automated. Is So essentially what that's saying is if, if, if something happens and you ring and you say, what did you do that for? And they say it's automated. It's, again, there's no relationship in that. So it's about how you build those relationships with people, how you have a genuine interest in them and, and how you genuinely get along with people. Yeah, great. And so what, what I'm getting from this is also that um, you can get better in sales. It's like a subject. You, you know, you don't, you don't automatically, you know, say John's good at sales and Mark is not good at sales. People, you know, obviously are naturally better at it. But it's, it is a sub, like, it's like a subject at school. It can be learned. And for all you people out there who think that you're not that good, you know, would you agree that it's a skill that you can pick up, Jason? Oh, absolutely. If, if you if you have a friend in life, you, you could actually do it. And again, I'm not saying that, that that I just want to give you a really quick example, if I can. But but this is an example where it doesn't you don't have to remember everything. It's not like you need to sit there and say, "Yep, I remember every single thing about this person." But one of the examples I was given was when you buy a new car, you buy it off the new the new car salesman. He he sells you the car. When you bring the car into service, you go to the service department, and there's there's sort of no no um or not necessarily any gelling between those two but if you wrote a note and said um, maureen's coming in today um she runs vas um and uh she likes riding bikes in thailand and then when maureen comes in and the salesman's actually stood in the driveway and as maureen's coming down the driveway he looks at looks at his notes and he says oh yeah i remember maureen hi maureen how are you going how's your how's your bike riding going you've been still been doing some fundraising you know the kids you know it must be tough doing homeschooling at the moment with the kids just breaks that down. All of a sudden, that Maureen sits there and says, yeah, "You validated me there. Like I actually feel like you care." And and you do. Like if you and you want to have a genuine interest in it. I'm not saying do it and and then go. I'm having a terrible day and go. Oh well, no worries. Thanks. Bye. Like it's you've got to have a genuine interest in it. So yeah, and be willing. From what you said there, be willing to sit with the answer. Absolutely. Like, yeah. Don't, 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 they don't want to yeah. go. Well, I'm feeling shit at COVID at the moment and actually my kids had a sports day yesterday and I lost it and I yelled at them, which is what just had a conversation yesterday, Jason. <laughs> yeah. um, but, you know, and then so and not be fearful of what people are going to say. Exactly. And, 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 and if you're going to ask the question and not care about the answer, don't ask the question in the first place. 
So, so to me, it is important that you, that you have a genuine interest in that person and what they're going to say. Um, yeah. Awesome. So um, that there were the key thing there around what Jason's sharing is that um, sales is all about taking a genuine interest in people and that it is uh, some, a subject like a school subject uh, that can be learned and that you you can you can improve. And the other key thing that I really loved was you know never ask a question that you're not prepared for the answer. Yeah. Okay, and now the third thing you want to share with us today, um, Jason, which I think is very pertinent to us, so whether business acquaintances can become friends. So a bit of background. So Jason runs CRMA and he's been doing it for many, many years, um, helping um, car dealerships uh, around Australia, their service departments, get their customers back. And um, he, you know, is an expert in this, Came to me years ago because he just wanted to, you know, accelerate, start, you know, accelerate the business, um, and then we formed a um, a working relationship. So, um, but you know, it's, it's sort of evolved over time. So, um, but a lot of people out there, Jason, would say, no, you can't. You know, you should keep business, business, and personal, personal. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, I, I, I strongly disagree, and I, and I think that. While there's aspects of your life that you probably do want to keep private, I'm not trying to say that you, you need to share everything in your life. But again, if you're genuinely invested in what you're doing, then you should be genuinely invested in the people that you're dealing with. So, um, and probably what I would say, Maureen, is I'd consider you to be one of my great friends, um, somebody that I can talk to, I can shoot the breeze, have honest conversations with. But essentially, our relationship started because you're a supplier and I was a consumer. And probably the, the reverse to that is um, I've got that many clients that I would consider to be really dear friends that I care a lot for as well. And again, um, if they left their jobs and, and weren't dealing with us anymore, I'd, I'd hope that I could keep in touch with them. So I think you know, while, while you might want to keep things um, separate, the only reason that you would want to keep things separate is if you weren't proud of the person that you were when you're at work or if you're not proud of the person that you are at home. And to me, if you are, then you should have a genuine interest that you should be happy to, to share what's happening with you and be genuinely interested in what's happening with the person that you have a relationship with. I'm not saying that you should end up being best friends with every single one of your clients or your suppliers and there's people that'll piss you off and there's people that'll make you happy and there's people that you deal with because they come in and spend money and, and you provide a great service. I'm not saying that's everything, but definitely you want to be having a, a relationship and say, so, yeah, I... I I do think that I'm happy to share my story with suppliers and clients, if, if that's the right terminology, and I think that everybody should be should be happy to do the same thing. Yeah, yeah. So Are we friends, Maureen, or not? That it's, um, uh, yeah, it's not this blanket approach that it's a yes or no for everybody, but it's, you know, often you, you do make connections with people working them over, with them over the years, um, and if there's an opportunity, you know, if it, if it evolves like that, then go for it. Yeah, and look, the, the easiest example for me where where you'll have conversations with people is football. Like, I, I barrack for Richmond Football Club. Not many people would know that. <laughs> Everybody would know that. <laughs> but, but, but so I can have genuine conversations with people about football and then it evolves to, you know, I've helped out with coaching football and, and so all those things build and, and you do have a lot of things in common and at the very least, you're selling a product that somebody is interested in, which means you have a common interest, which is that product. Like you've already got something in common before you've even started. So, so, and probably in, in our case, Maureen, you had an interest in me and I had an interest in me, which meant that you helped me to get to where I, where I was going to. And if you don't mind me sharing, I, I think when we were catching up, we probably spent the first five minutes talking about how you've been and what you're doing because I knew that we were going to, spend the next hour talking about what I was doing. So I genuinely wanted to know who am I dealing with and, and how's, how are they going today and how's their life and how's things going? Yeah. And and I can't tell you how much that made the, the process more uh, enjoyable for me as a business coach for all those years. So of, of my clients, maybe 30% would um, regularly 
ask me how I was and show an interest. And I know it's not it's not relevant because they're they're paying me for a service and I'm supporting them. But those people, like the the power in the relationship almost tripled, I reckon, just because it felt like it was more of a two-way thing. And I don't know what people would say about that, and there's probably a disagreement with it. Um, but for me, I think that's one of the reasons why the relationship did evolve as well and that I can call you a mate because of the fact that you were, you know, took five or ten minutes or whatever to show an interest in me as well. Yeah, and, and like even from a from a staff point of view, um, we, we uh, do a, a, a thing where we ask each other a question every morning because we're all separated. We ask questions and, and you have to answer this question. And the question I was asked was, who's the person that makes you laugh or smile? And I actually quoted Richard from um, Melbourne City Toyota in Campbellwell, who's a client, and they said they were thinking, you know, for all the friends and everything that I've got, like that's that's a client who I also consider to be a friend. But it's somebody who every time I talk to him, we have a laugh, and we and that's not to say he doesn't ring me up and say what's going on with this and how do we fix this and I want to get this happening or whatever. But by the same token, he's someone who genuinely makes me laugh and smile every time I talk to him, and that's a client, and that's somebody that. I had no knowledge of other than when I started doing service reminders for him. Yeah, exactly. And, and I think that's a really good point there that just like any relationship, it's not all roses the whole time. Like Karma and I, you know, love each other one day and annoy each other the next one. Well, let's say not the next day, the next minute, <laughs> if we're <laughs> honest. And um, but it's 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 actually taken me a few years to really understand that that's what it is. It's not like the person all of a sudden hates you. So that you can still maintain friendships, relationships with customers and clients, you know, um, even though you're providing a service and sometimes they may not be exactly, you know, um, happy or, um, but having that relationship uh, actually supports them to raise things with you. Yeah, and, and do you know the other thing, Maureen? If, if you're going to spend 40 hours a week working, I don't know how many hours people work, um, but... But if you're going to spend 40 hours a week working, how much better is it actually enjoying what you're doing and who you're working with and whether that supplies, again, suppliers or, or consumers, if you're enjoying it, it makes life so much better to actually enjoy yourself while you're, what is it? Make your obsession your profession, you'll never work a day in your life. Enjoy the people you're working with and you'll enjoy your, enjoy your working life. Yeah, and in fact, maybe you, and we've heard that a bit too, that, and Carmen's doing this really well at the moment too, is just, you know, getting more clients that you really gel with because it's going to work better. Yeah, exactly. Excellent. And then also, um, so so how is things going for you overall with all these relationships during COVID? Well, I, I almost didn't make it today. I um, We unexpectedly had the VACC reopen uh, car dealerships for servicing, which was completely unexpected. So on uh, Wednesday morning, I got an email, and then my phone pretty much hasn't stopped. So I've actually had to had to turn it off now to to do this. But so basically, again, all those relationships on the first call. So people are saying we're back open for business. We need to get customers in. I'm I'm really proud that that we're the first call. To say we need to get people back in, so people are getting in touch with us. So yeah. Hey, okay, great. And um and I love that um they like I reckon there'll be a bit of business for car servicing departments at the moment all those cars been sitting there <laughs> not driving <laughs> flat battery and needing some fine tuning yeah well I, I think that's what's happening is everyone's all of a sudden realizing you do actually have to need you need to drive cars to keep them going well and yeah things do do go wrong with them which well unfortunate fortunate for for business but yeah it is something needs to be done so yeah excellent Okay, great. So um, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I love, even though we hear this all the time, oh, you know, sales is about relationships. I love putting the, the relationship back in customer relationships. Um, I love the, your point about sales being like going to Heelsville, where it's, it's all about being able to not to see all the greenery, but seeing the different sorts of shrubs and trees meaning being able to go into a dealership, um, sorry, in your circumstance, going into a car dealership, for instance, and, and seeing all the different people in their different roles and actually making an effort um, to get to know people. And, and even if it's just a small effort of asking a couple of questions, I think that's really valuable and we should really continue to do that, especially that secondary question. 
Um, then you talk, talked about the top subject that should be taught in schools, which we again we talked about sales and how value it is, valuable it is as a life skill. And um, I really loved you sharing your stories about that. And then the third one was around um, whether a business acquaintances can become friends. And I'd really like to say that I do think you're a great friend. Uh, I get lots of insights about men and dating from you because I think you just <laughs> give me lots of good advice, um, which sometimes I think I need. Um, yep. And that we have a relationship where we can continue to do business with each other over the years, uh, but also step out of that and have a you know a friendly, supportive chat. So I think that adds that extra value. Um, so thank you for joining me today. If people are interested in getting their customers back. Uh, especially car dealerships. Um, can you share a little bit about uh, how they can get in touch? Yeah, sure. So, th so the company name is CRMA, which is probably a pretty easy, like CRMA, which is the website. Um, my email address is jfisher at crma.com.au. Um, yeah, we'd, we'd love to hear from you. Again, probably Googling is the easiest way, just CRMA, so Customer Retention Marketing Australia. Um, just, just if I can say one last thing, Maureen, to anybody who's watching this, as in from a, from a, if you're taking notes on it, if you're not going to mean it, don't, don't do it. Like if you need to genuinely invest in, in the relationships and mean them for, to, for them to work. So, but yeah, Excellent. thanks very much for having me on. Okay, great, great final words. If you don't mean it, don't do it. I love it. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> And if anyone wants any more information, um, tips and insights around uh, business, then join us at globalteams.com.au. So lovely to see you all again today and we'll see you at the same time next Friday. Bye for now.